we have this 2019 Chevy Silverado with a P228C and P0089 for a high pressure fuel pump performance. Um, engine is going like crap. Vehicles have a hard time starting in the morning. So, got the, the parts are in. Vehicle gonna be serviced right now. Let's shut it off and let's start by depressurize the fuel system. Let's go. Here are the new parts. So, we're gonna remove fuels 83 um, that's the fuels that control the fuel pump we're going to take it off and let the vehicle run until one out of fuel we're going to start it it will start and you shut off on the sound and you start it again it will be best if you start it a couple a couple times until it completely one out of fuel so we're going to remove our air intake box loosen this eight millimeter bolt and the other eight millimeter bolt so you can remove um the intake let's take the boat off the box and there is a 10 millimeter bolt that attached the airbox to the alternator let's remove that one and there is a couple wiring harness attached to that um bracket we're going to take it off. We're gonna use a trim tool like this to pry off the wiring harness. And let's remove our PCV hose out of the intake box. It's in the back of it. You're going to push this white tab, white tab, and pull the hose out of it. There you go. Let's remove the um, the throttle body connector. We're pretty much gonna remove everything that's attached to the intake manifold because the high pressure fuel pump is located under the intake manifold in the back of the engine. It's in the engine valley. So we're gonna remove anything that's attached to it. And um, like the harness, we remove the connector on the alternator pull this wet tab and disconnect the alternator um, connector remove the harness anything that's attached to it is gonna have to be removed we're going to re we're going to unplug um, this fresh air intake tube from um, the intake manifold we unplug our map sensor good and we're going to remove um the pressure valve hose that come out of it you push that way tap down and pull the hose out of it it will be best if you remove the pressure valve out of the intake completely because it's pretty awkward to unplug it so we're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt and pull the purge valve out. Remember to put it back in. If not, the engine won't run. We're gonna remove every single push pin that's attached to the intake manifold once again, all around it. Good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, you have the ignition coils and the inject, not the ignition coils attached to the manifold, so we're going to remove them. We're going to blow all the dirt out of the engine bay so nothing fall inside the engine because we're going to have the ink tip port open so you don't want anything to fall inside the engine. So the intake manifold is held by 10 10 millimeter bolt, five on each side. We're going to remove them, loosen them up. You don't have to remove them completely. Um, the captive bolt. We're going to loosen them up, all ten of them. And there are four push pins attached in the back of the intake manifold. As shown in the picture here, you need to we need to remove them 
from the back of the intake manifold using a trim tool you can't see it but you're gonna have to do it by feel there is a few harnesses attached to it so you have to remove them if not it will be impossible to remove the intake manifold what you can do too is pull the manifold as much as you can towards you and go in the back and unplug them there you go you see as you guys see here there are four holes pretty much four wiring harness attached to it so we're going to use some rag like this um, to plug the intake port and we're gonna remove um, this insulation foam remember to put it back in put it on the side so here is your high pressure fuel pump it is driven by the cam camshaft so we're going to unplug it um, let's disengage the wet tab using a pick or a flat disc screwdriver and unplug it and we're gonna remove um, the low pressure side um, fuel hose fuel pipe um, it is held by a 10 millimeter bolt it's attached to the valve cover on the driver side and we're gonna remove this clip here I don't know what they call it it's something to, that prevent the fuel line from backing out so you need to remove it and put it on the side and we're gonna use a fuel disconnect quick disconnect tool I'll, I'll add the link in the comment section below for it so you can disconnect the fuel line out of it It's a game of patience. You have to, you need two hands to do this. Good. And you take it out. And we're going to loosen the high pressure fuel lines. Um, the S line, it goes from the fuel pump to um, the injector well. Those lines are one time use. Once again, you they are one time use. You cannot reuse them when you're done. So you'll be best if you replace it, repl replace it while you're replacing the high pressure fuel pump. Um, so I'm gonna, it's a 17 millimeter. We need to loosen them up and remove it out of the way. And make sure you put a wag underneath it because it's gonna leak fuel. Although with the pressurizer system, there's still some residue left in the system. It's trash. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna remove this connector here that's attached to the fuel injector wells so you can have access to those two 30 millimeter bolts on the high pressure fuel pump. You have to loosen them up at the same time because it's spring loaded. So make sure you do it um, one side at a time, going back and forth like I'm doing in the video. It's almost out. There it is. It's trash. So we're gonna clean on the port here with some brake clean. There is a special tool to use to make sure that the camshaft is at base circle. Um, you're gonna spin the crankshaft until it's at base circle. If it's not that tool, when it's base circle, the special tool will be flush with um, with the intake valley. But um, when it's not, you're gonna have to turn the crankshaft clockwise a few times until you get it flush, fully inserted to the bore. So here is our new high pressure fuel pump. We're going to bolt it. We're gonna do the same thing once again. You tie them down at the same time. You're gonna go back and forth. Cause it is spring loaded. That will be another way to do it. If you don't have the special tool, you can do it that way. Make sure that you do it like, like I'm doing the video right now. 
back and forth until it fully seated evenly. Good. We're going to plug everything back in and um and we're going to attach down the low pressure side of the fuel line to the high pressure fuel pump you're gonna really click when it's fully seated good we're gonna put this retainer back in it could be a challenge, but it's doable. We're gonna pull our low pressure side. We're gonna attach it to the valve cover. And we're going to put um, our line back. Good. There is a torque spec for this, but it's pretty impossible to do it with a torque wrench. So what you're gonna do is use a 70 millimeter on this and you're going to tidy until it can turn. I wouldn't go too crazy with it, but um, that you're gonna have a feel for it. When it's not turning anymore, don't go, don't go past that. If not, you're gonna strip it and break it. But um, that would be the way I would do it if you don't have a torque wrench. But it's pretty impossible to use a torque wrench on it once again. So we're going to inspect our intake manifold gasket. Um, those were in pretty good shape. I didn't have to replace them. Um, but I'll add the link in the comment if you guys want to replace it. Depending on the age of the vehicle. We have our intake manifold back in. And we're going to run the bolt through. Using my Milwaukee watch right here. If you don't have a torque wrench, it will be best if you use it to create watch it like this and hold it on top like I'm doing right now because those bolts doesn't have to be too tight they are the talk the talk spec is not that high at all so you just hold it on top like this and turn it until you until it stop don't go too hard on it let's put our push pin back in Install all your wiring harness, attach them to the intake manifold, secure them in place. And um, you pretty much do reverse of removal. And we're gonna put everything back in and the vehicle will be ready to be started. And remember to put the fuse back in and what we're gonna do we're gonna be going inside the vehicle um turn the vehicle to accessory mode a few times what we're doing we're priming the, the low pressure side of the fuel system we're going to turn it on turn it back off like three times on the fourth time also um you can start the vehicle and that will be it guys